Let's talk about the Platonic Gods. I am Eric Steinhardt. You can learn more about me at my website, www.ericsteinhardt.com. Chapter 1, The Great Chain of Being. The Great Chain of Being, it's a series of ranks of things by their degrees of excellence, and it has its roots in Plato's divided line. It was developed by the Stoics, and it gets taken up by the later Roman Platonists, uh, like Plotinus, Iamblichus, Porphyry, Proclus, uh, Damascus, all those guys. I'm not going to talk too much about the Great Chain um, in its Stoic form, but let's just go through it here in Chapter 2. Uh, from rocks to humans. Uh, there's a rock. Uh, rocks are on the lowest level of the uh, Great Chain. They just exist. Uh, plants are on the next level. They exist and have life. Uh, animals, uh, non-human animals, on a higher level, they exist, they have life, they have uh, perception and motion. Uh, and then, of course, humans. Look at that. There's me in 1989. But Chapter 3 moves on to heroes. So heroes uh, come after humans. The great chain rises up above humans, and the next higher level is the heroes. And Plotinus, Iamblichus, and others talk about them. Uh, they're superhuman bodies between humans and gods, like, for instance, the demigod Hercules. And there he is. There's Hercules dragging Cerberus from the gates of hell, right? He has a superhuman body. He's half human, half god. And we have another instance, Durga, right? She is a Hindu goddess, and her many arms, for instance, indicate her many powers, superhuman powers. So the heroes, uh, ancient heroes, have superhuman bodies. How can we modernize these heroes? Uh, the heroes can be modernized by thinking of them as transhuman bodies. They're genetically engineered for superhuman functionality. And wow, you could get kind of weird with this, right? You could have, you know, sort of fractal bodies where you've got Wow, hands upon hands upon hands, and uh, this could be extended in many, many different ways. Let's move to chapter four, the daimones, right? What are they? The great chain rises up above the heroes, and the next rank is the daimones. How can we modernize the daimones, right? They are not demons, uh, as the Christians would have it, but they are sort of superhuman uh, entities even above the heroes, and they can be modernized by identifying them with robots. They're superhuman robotic bodies, right? There's one on a space station uh, in some informational network, and, you know, the, these bodies become like angels, angelic robots are ascending into the heavens. Hans Moravec in Mind Children, that's a classic book on superhuman robots, and that would give you some insight into just how far things can go on the Great Chain with robotic bodies. Chapter 5, The Celestial Gods. So, the Great Chain now rises to the lowest level of gods. These are the visible gods, and Plotinus and Iamblichus talk about them, as do others. There are a few sub-ranks of these, but we're going to focus on gods with bodies at the planetary or stellar scales, right? These were for the ancient Greeks and Romans looked up into the sky, and they saw the sun, the moon, the planets, uh, and the stars, and thought they were divine bodies. They're gods. How can we modernize these? Well, let's turn to Anders Sandberg. He wrote an article, The Physics of Information Processing Super Objects, Daily Life Among the Jupiter Brains. There he is, Anders Sandberg. And he says, Zeus, he gives some examples, Zeus is a planet-sized superintelligent computer. Uranus is a computer superintelligent a machine as large as a solar system. It's composed of you know, trillions upon trillions of you know, asteroid-type bodies networked together that do all this computing and get power from the central sun. Kronos is a computer, a super-intelligent uh, computing machine made out of a neutron star. And these are celestial gods, right? Uh, in year million, Robert Bradbury talks about Mitryoshka brains, which are, again, super-intelligent computers as large as solar systems, absorbing the entire power output of their stars, nested shells of comp computronium. So the celestial gods are planetary or stellar-scale intelligent machines. Here's a Dyson, right, a Dyson sphere or Dyson swarm, right? Those ribbons are uh, machines absorbing the power of the central sun as this whole structure rotates around the star. Uh, another example of a kind of Dyson 
mega structure, a super intelligent computing structure absorbing all kinds of power from its central star. Uh, and star-like bodies, right, stellar minds, these were described in a variety of science fiction books. Chapter 6, the cosmic gods. And these are going to be the top rank of the celestial gods. Their bodies begin to be woven into the fabric or structure of space-time. They're quantum mechanical or holographic intelligent computers. They're actually sort of like some of the uh, elder gods in H.P. Lovecraft, right? And you can think of these, you know, as, as cosmic bodies, bodies woven into space and time. And again, bodies that now are, aren't really human at all anymore, robotic or planetary, but these super intelligent cosmic machines, super intelligence woven into the structure of sp face, space and time. And there it is, right, a, a mind as large as a galaxy, right, computing on a galactic scale. Chapter 7, the intelligible gods, right, they are the intelligible gods, they are at the top of the rank of the physical things in the great chain. And these are super intelligent machines made of pure information. Perhaps they're like networks of entangled quantum bits, qubits. They're not made of physical particles or stuff, they're not in space-time in any ordinary way. Hans Moravec, in the final chapter of his book, Robot, right, uh, Mindfire, talks about these kinds of purely quantum, super-intelligent machines that are just sort of, if they're made out of anything, they're made out of pure information. And this is, what do they look like? They don't really look like anything, right? They're networks of entangled bits of information in subspace or hyperspace or wherever you'd like to put them, but they're not really in any kind of space or time that exists in any ordinary way in our universe. They're beyond that. And those are some ranks of the Platonic gods on the Great Chain. I'm Eric Steinhardt, and you can learn more about me at my website, ericsteinhardt.com.